Hey everybody, welcome back for another Make and Tell Tuesday. Today we're going to be playing with a technique I'm calling batik stamping, which is inspired by this fabric of the same name. So in batik fabric dyeing, it uses a process of resist where you create a pattern using wax and then dye your fabric and remove the wax and you're left with this pattern. And so they can create a design in multiple layers by dyeing and over dyeing the fabric. So that's the technique that we're going to be kind of simulating today with our stamping. And we're going to be using clear embossing powder and a resist technique. At first, I just really wanted to create pretty tone on tone backgrounds that kind of resembled the same look as batik fabrics and then as I was playing around I discovered that you can also play around with color and create layers of very different contrasting colors and so that kind of turned into a fun experiment as well. So the first technique with the tone on tone is a bit simpler and quicker but you are restricted to a tone on tone color palette or at least colors that layer nicely over the top of each other. With the variation of this technique you can really play around with contrasting colors and really have fun um, coming up with some different color combinations. And so I'll show you both of those techniques today. For this technique today, we'll be using this leaf image from the Signed and Sealed with a Kiss set. It's perfect for this technique because it's two steps, so we can add some shading and some detail, but it's also very simple to layer and stamp, and it has a lot of interest with both the lined leaves and the solid leaves, so it's really great for this technique. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the more simple tone-on-tone -tone effect. To start off, I have a panel of watercolor paper. This is just inexpensive watercolor paper from Hobby Lobby. It's the Master's Touch brand. Okay, so you can see I sponged just a bit of tumbled glass ink onto this watercolor panel. I'm also going to add a little bit of variation of color. And maybe even we'll add some greens. So for this first tone on tone technique, like I said, you're going to want to choose colors that coordinate and layer well with each other. Before we move on to the next step, you want to make sure that your sponged ink is nice and dry so that you don't have embossing powder sticking where you don't want it. You can go ahead and hit that with a heat gun. And then even to be extra sure, you can go over it with an embossing buddy, or I always just keep a little dish of cornstarch, which works just as well. So I'll just rub a little bit of that over the top, and that makes sure that I don't get my embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. So next we're going to do some stamping. You're actually going to start with that detail layer of the leaves. I have that in my Misty, and I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And I'm going to be stamping that with Blueprint Sketch ink. You can think of your, your sponged ink as the solid layer, the color that is going to be the solid layer of your stamping, and then your detail layer in a darker shade. All right, then I'm going to pull out the solid layer, the actually the first layer of that image and position that right over the top, lining up all of those details. And then I'm going to stamp that in Versamark ink. And we'll go ahead and coat that with clear embossing powder. And we'll heat that up. Now that that's all embossed, now we can go ahead and add more color 
using some sponging over the top. So essentially we just sealed that stamping and that first layer of ink blending underneath that clear embossing powder. And so whatever we layer over the top now is going to not change that the look of that. It won't be quite as dramatic yet as we're inking over the top because that embossing powder is picking up a little bit of that color. But when we're done inking, we're going to go ahead and wipe that down and really make that image pop. So now comes the fun part when we really get to wipe away some of that ink that stayed on our embossing and we can really make that image pop out and contrast. Now we're going to do a variation of the same technique, but this version allows you to, like I said at the beginning of the video, get used to more contrasting colors. So instead of starting with some ink sponging and blending, we're actually going to stamp. So I'm going to start with the first step of that leaf image this time, not the second step like we did last time. I'm going to start with the first step, the solid uh, image, the base layer of that leaf cluster. And I'm going to stamp that in a lighter color. And so I'm using shaded lilac. When you're stamping on watercolor paper, you might need to do a couple impressions in your MISTI to get a nice uh, color throughout over that texture. Okay, and then I'm going to set up the second layer, the leaf detail and the berries. And I'm going to stamp those in a darker color. I'm going to use Blueprint Sketch again. Okay, and that is so pretty. I love Shaded Lilac with Blueprint Sketch. It's such a pretty combination. Blueprint Sketch is probably one of my favorite colors. It's just such a pretty vibrant blue. Then we're going to go back and we are once again going to stamp the solid layer. So I'm going to position that right back over the top of that first image, which is what the Misty is so great for. I just, I love this tool. I don't know that I can stamp without it. <laughs> so we're going to line that back up and then I'm going to stamp that with Versamark. These Distress Oxide inks might stay wet long enough that you wouldn't have to stamp with Versamark, but I just like to make sure that I'm getting a nice even coating with the embossing powder. So I go ahead and stamp that a second time with the Versamark. And then we're going to coat that with clear embossing powder and heat that up. So that is all embossed and basically what we have done now is trapped that stamped image underneath that clear embossing powder. And so we can go ahead and add whatever color we want to over the top of that. So I'm going to get out my cracked pistachio and do some sponging over the top. And also work in some tumbled glass. And then we can go ahead and wipe down our image and make sure we get off all of the excess ink that's accumulated over top of our embossing. There we have a super bright and vibrant multicolored image that is all in one layer. 
And of course, since I don't think any project is done until we've added a little bit of splatter, I'm going to add some splattering. And I'm going to use Blueprint Sketch, and I'm just inking a little bit of that right directly from the pad onto a scrap of acetate. And then I'll take a wet brush, pick up some of that color, and just tap it onto my project. I also want to add a little bit of shimmer with some gold splatters and so I'm going to be using my metallic accents watercolor metallic watercolors from Art Philosophy. This gold right here is my favorite. So we'll just wet that and splatter some of that as well. So it's just a super fun technique that is a little bit of a spin on your traditional heat emboss resist. And of course you can use it at, for focal points like we did today, or it makes gorgeous backgrounds. And so you can play around with all kinds of different color combinations and layouts. Thanks for joining me for this Make and Tell Tuesday. I hope you have fun playing around with this technique. And if you do, be sure to share it with us. Tag us on Instagram or on Facebook, and we'd love to check it out.